wealth does not start with ideas kingdom wealth does not start with ideas business people i respect all that you have learned but i submit to you with your by the authority of scripture wealth does not even start with business it does not start with investments wealth starts with your let me challenge all business people and contractors here trust me if you are part of this vision i'm showing you how to be wealthy leave all those contract papers in one minute and take a day or two when god is ready to bring you into seasons of abundance how does he do it this is what i want to show you now what is the dynamics of manifesting the resources of God please follow carefully I have shown you but I want to show you in another way now walking in abundance moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost I am favor I am walking in abundance moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost I'm going to tell you something that some of you may not believe, but I hope you do believe. It will not take long, as long as you think, for God to prosper you. Do you know why? We don't have that much time again. Are we together? If in your mind what you are thinking is Warren Buffett and then by the time you are 85 years old, then my discussion should not even concern you because it's not you I'm talking to. I'm talking about people based on, I, I, you remember the dream I told you? That it was the ground, a seed that was sown and quickly, quickly, it just came and became a giant tree. I believe that and I believe that there are people who need to step into that. The reason is because destiny is a function of time. Please pay attention now. Destiny is a function of time. Destiny is a function of time. I'm not against the world system. Don't get me wrong. It's a system whose result has been proven. But the, the urgency that is upon the saints and God's program cannot give you the liberty to start on that wise again. It will not work. We don't even have that much time left. There has to be a strategy by the spirit are we together can i show you blessed be the name of the lord hmm. write this down the secret to stepping into accelerated wealth is strategic destiny connections the secret to stepping into accelerated wealth is strategic destiny connections the secret to stepping into accelerated wealth is strategic destiny connections I started my discussion by showing you a scripture that says the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord. Remember the scripture? But that the earth hath he given to the children of men. That means your relationship with Jesus, watch this now, and your understanding his economic system secures that blessing upon you. But to manifest it in your life, here and now as prophecy has shown depends on strategic destiny connections say that after me strategic destiny connections koinonia body of christ this is the world of men this is the world of men prosperity happens through the ministry of men accelerated wealth happens through the ministry of men if you don't obtain grace to have strategic destiny connections you will remain poor even though you are productive please understand this 
those that will be stepping into prophetic dimensions of wealth will be people who are valuable with wisdom but in addition to it you see i have learned and i have taught you here that what you call business is not transaction with things it is the business of men every business on earth is the business of men whether you call it oil and gas the business of men banking the business of men agriculture the business of men mining the business of men it is men that give value to the products it is men that give value to the transactions when you buy or sell at the back end of what you are doing is a man kill every man on earth and then all the atms should be given to you all the bank safes should be open all the mining sites should be open they will be useless because there is no man if you have products and you don't have men you are not going to be wealthy did you hear what i said if you have ideas and you don't have men you are not going to be wealthy when god wants to show you mercy whether as a man of god let me tell you the truth he is going to empower you with grace but he will grant you access to strategic relationships relationships that believe in your vision relationships that believe what you stand for and those men will invest into you invest into your relationship when the resources come the wisdom to manage them is already there that's where being valuable comes in The nation of Israel remained poor and beggarly for many years even though they were a covenant people because they did not understand the economic system of the kingdom. They would come out of Egypt with plenty overnight and yet there were many instances where they were still poor and beggarly and became slaves again. Do you know that the nation of Israel became like fugitives? It was David that gave Israel a city till today in Israel their flag is the star of David it was David that gave them a resting place because they did not really understand the economic system of the kingdom when I learned how prophecy makes is manifest financially it is not about things it is about men the reason why you need to hold something in your hand is so that it will attract the men did you hear what I said? Men. Men are the unfair advantage that God has placed in our world to help prophecies, even financial prophecies, to come to pass in the lives of people. If you think all you will do is to save your way towards buying your house, taking care of your children, I assure you, in this wicked world we are living in, you may not build a house in your lifetime. Do you know that there are graduates that for 10, 20 years after graduation, they've not gotten a job. And even for those who have gotten a job, they are not able to do anything. See, I've had the honor by the privilege of God's grace to travel a bit. And this is not an African problem. I've traveled a bit. And the number one trouble for people is even getting to the basics of establishment. Satan wants it so. So you spend your entire life trying to make ends meet. Whether it's a house, whether it's some means of mobility, whether it's something for your children, even in economies that their systems work, there are people who are still victims because it's an antichrist system. Let me tell you the truth. When God wants to help you, there are people he has already helped. God will bring strategic, I call it strategic connection. You are not the one who looks for it. If you go around looking for rich people, they will arrest you one day. Because there are some of you. you, you <laughs> some of you, once someone does not have money, cannot be your friend. And you will use what I say now and say confirmation. You see now. Apostle has even agreed with me. I can't surround myself with people suffering again. Be careful. Because God is still lifting men. Somebody you will laugh at today, you will turn and find out he's the only help you have. Unfortunately, you have insulted the person. What happens if Joseph is the only one who can give you food and you already threw him in the well? What do you tell him as a prime minister? 
I've shown you that that model of strategic connections, we see it between Abraham and Lot. You remember? We see, do you know how Abraham prospered? I taught you here. Abimelech, go and read your Bible. Remember Abimelech wanted to carry his wife and God told him, if you touch that woman, you are dead. And as a reward, he gave him gifts, gave him several things. Lot went with him. He was benevolent enough to share. Lot's becoming wealthy was not a product of his wisdom. It was not a product of his value. It was that he was strategically connected to a man who had covenant with God. How about Ruth and Boaz? How about Esther? Are we together now? Mordecai was outside of the palace. But the day the king decided to draw him close, that man was celebrated overnight. Do you think Mordecai was not valuable? He was valuable. He saved the king. And yet he was not rewarded. Because the race is not to the swift. Nor the battle to the strong. Nor bread sometimes to them that are wise. When God wants to help you, I'm teaching you a powerful formula so that you will know how to engage in this prophecy. Does not mean to not be valuable, don't get me wrong. Does not mean to not build your value and transact as you do, but have it at the back of your mind that God gives men speed, not by putting them on chariots. He gives them speed by bringing those who are already a representation of your future and to make them like you and to connect with you in a way that allows them to release from their blessings to you. This is how the kingdom works. That in one day, you can step into a level of inheritance that will bless you. Why is God not afraid to bring that kind of speed? Because he has worked on your heart. So plenty does not destroy you again. Because your heart already belongs to him. Are we together now? Let me tell you the truth. And I don't mean to insult money. But this one one naira that keeps dropping like dew. Not much will ever happen for the kingdom like that. Not for your life, not for his program. The Antichrist system has a bank of wealth and they are prepared to fund anything that is against the program of God. Believers must have access to the resources of the kingdom. I will always make reference to all the various programs that we are organizing now by the grace of God. I know we are praying. I know you want to see Jesus revealed. But ladies and gentlemen, if I begin to tell you the economic implication of obedience. Did you hear what I said? The economic implication of obeying God. Paul said, I, I was not negligent to this heavenly calling. But it takes a lot of resources. And that when God wants to help a man, beyond just giving you business ideas, he brings strategic men. Strategic men are even enhancers to your business. Your business prospers based on who you do the business with. Not just the business. Any business can make you a multi-millionaire. Any scriptural godly business can make you a millionaire and billionaire depending on who you do it with. Are we together? So even using the works of your hands, when God wants to help you, he will help you to serve kings because the wealth of any nation is in the palace. As much as it's in the field, when it is extracted from the field, it is taken to the palace. That is where it is stored. And if you cannot access the palace, nor the heart of Pharaoh, you will remain poor. When you see me cry about favor all the time, and I teach you relationship principles all the time is because this is, is not one of the many ways. I tell you sincerely, it is the accelerator factor in your becoming prosperous. So when God says it is a season of abundance, that means he's bringing you greater wisdom. That means he's purging your heart. That means that he's granting the blessing upon the work of your hands. But more than that, it means that you must begin to pray. He says you ask for the rain at the time of the latter rain. When you see that the time has come, you participate in prayer. Lord, who is that one man? Who is that one woman strategically connected? And you learn how to discern them and receive them when they come. Because if you pray like I have taught you, and you do not know how your answer looks like. Your answer will pass you. 
and God will say, I answered you since January. And you kept driving away your answer. Your answer came as a destiny helper, but because you do not know what to do with destiny helpers, you push them away. Can I show you one more thing before we pray? Is someone learning? Who is ready to receive? Hmm. Walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am faithful. I've taught you in this place that relationships are advantageous connections. I've taught you that relationships must be mutually beneficial, not equally beneficial but mutually beneficial to the parties that are involved. Listen carefully now. I've taught you in this place that relationships are bridges, if you recall, to an exceptional life. The bridge between your yesterday and tomorrow, the quality of your yesterday and tomorrow is a relationship. The same way you can stand because a bridge is broken. You are seen where you need to go to, but you are not able to get there because the bridge is broken that is what happens to a man when the strategic relationships that are meant to birth prophecy in your life when those relationships are not there you can even see not by vision you can see the kind of future you should step in but never get into that future i've taught you that relationships are currencies please hear me prophetic people relationships are currencies that they can buy Anything money can buy. Anything money can buy. Relationships can buy it. Let me say it again. Anything you think about anything money can buy. Relationships can buy it. If money can buy you a house, relationships can buy that house. If money can buy you any means of mobility, relationships can do that. If money can fund a crusade, relationships can fund a crusade. Anything at all. Relationships are currencies. In my teaching here, teaching you on true riches, and you may want to make reference to that, one of the currencies that we use to buy money is relationships. Now listen carefully. I taught you here that the easiest way to succeed in life is through strategic relationships and destiny connections. The easiest way to succeed, even financially. But... Among the many things I've taught you about relationships, I want to recall one that is important to connect with this prophetic word. Recall that I taught you the tripartite nature of relationships. Remember that? I taught you that you have your relationship with God, your relationship with men, and your relationship with things. Let me take that again. Your relationship with God, your relationship with men, and your relationship with things. You must have a healthy relationship with God. You must have a healthy relationship with men. And you must have a healthy relationship with things. If you default in any one of these levels of relationship, you will pay for it. There is a way you are supposed to have a relationship with God to succeed. There is a way you are supposed to have a relationship with men to succeed. And there is a way you are supposed to have a relationship with things to succeed. For instance, allowing things control you, allowing things possess you is a bad way of relating with things. That includes money. It is often said that money is a bad, ma a, a, a bad master but a good slave. You see that now? There is a healthy way to relate with things such that you profit from their presence but you are not corrupted by their presence there is a way to handle money there is a way to handle increase there is a way to handle influence there is a way to handle opportunities in a way that becomes profiting unto you but does not corrupt nor destroy you there is a way to work with men such that you can derive maximum utility from their presence without being corrupted by their presence. Are we together now? If you recall, I taught you that there are two ways you step into the world of greatness, the world of men. One is the world 
through the door of need and the door of value that if you step into the presence of greatness through the door of need you will be in the presence of greatness but you will remain a slave there forever but when you step in through the door of value even the great will acknowledge you as great is someone learning tonight you see the implication of receiving prophetic words you don't just jump and celebrate. You understand the implication and then you will see the results because God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If he has spoken on his own path, he's ready to do it. But it is your receiving, aligning with prophecy and engaging it by faith. That's what delivers to your table. Hallelujah. I taught you that your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. Your relationship with God, please write it down. This is how wealth manifests. Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. Please write that down. Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. Wisdom and favor now gives you access to men and systems your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor when you have wisdom and favor it will now give you access to men and it will give you access to systems men will now give you access to resources and influence you see how it works men will now give you access to resources and they will now give you access to influence then you finally use the influence and the resources for your profiting and to serve the purposes of the kingdom this is how it happens i will i will read that whole equation for you again your relationship with god gives you access to wisdom and favor you have that down wisdom and favor gives you access to men and gives you access to systems men now give you access to resources and give you access to influence and then you now use your resources and the influence that you now have to serve God to be a blessing to men and to live a successful life this is how it happens Compromise on this equation and you will not make it in life even financially. It starts with God but it ends with a successful life. And I'm demystifying that wealth equation for you that it is not as mysterious as people have made it. Your relationship with God grant among the many things that relationship affords you is wisdom and favor. Please look up. When you have wisdom and favor, genuine wisdom and favor, you will never be alone. Men will come because men were not designed to just come on their own. They come in response to wisdom. They come in response to favor. The men carrying the money you need, the men who will give the influence you need to reign in life, they will only answer to wisdom and favor. Say wisdom. Say favor. One more time, say wisdom and favor. So it stands with God, your loyalty to God, your covenant with God, your loving Jesus, your worshiping Him, your studying scripture, your praying, your accessing resources. What it does to you is that it imparts wisdom. When wisdom arrives and favor arrives, get ready, men are on their way coming. When the men come, they will come like the magi bringing you gifts of gold of frankincense and myrrh whether they are coming in exchange to your value or coming to reward your wisdom it doesn't matter one thing you will never lack when men are with you is resources listen you are as wealthy as the men whose hands are open towards you you are as wealthy as the men whose hands are open towards you let me say that again you are as wealthy as the men whose hands are open towards you 
Imagine that the men who open their hands towards you are called Pharaoh, Solomon, and Abimelech. Will you be poor? No. Your relationship with God, purified motif, loving Jesus, understanding the purpose of abundance, the purpose of kingdom wealth, understanding the purpose of the blessing of the Lord, all together imparts upon your life, among other things, wisdom and favor. When you carry wisdom and favor, you become a living magnet. You will attract men. I tell you, get wisdom and get favor and remain inside a hole. Men will come and meet you there. The moment you see men coming to you, listen please. Once you see men coming, know that with men are resources. Please look up. There was the wisdom of God that was in the prophet Elisha. Am I right on that? When Naaman had who looked for who? Naaman was a captain of the Syrian army. But he wanted to go and meet Elisha at the recommendation of the slave girl. Question, when Naaman became healed, did he carry gifts to go back? That is always what happens in the presence of wisdom. The greatest corporations in the world, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, is a business of numbers. The reason why they are wealthy to the capacity that they are today is because the little bit you are bringing is multiplied across the billions of the people on earth. Numbers. You are as wealthy, I will tell you again, as the men whose hands are open towards you. It is an irrefutable strategy. Look up please. This is my phone. I'm holding a mobile device on my hand. What made the company that produced this mobile device billionaires in dollars? Is it that they were the most creative in the world? No. But they spread their products to men, many enough. Many people wanted their products enough. Why do you produce something very exceptional and then spend money advertising? Who are you advertising to? The men who will buy the products. Your relationship with God brings you wisdom, brings you favor. When wisdom and favor rests upon your life, watch this koinonia, listen to me. It brings you resources and also brings you influence. Are we together? When you have resources and influence, then you can now use it to serve the purposes of the kingdom, to become a blessing to many like you covenanted with God and to live a successful life. Show me anybody who has prospered in the kingdom, prospering with the dignity of kingdom integrity. You will see this formula. It started with God. God imparted wisdom upon Solomon and with that wisdom came favor and Solomon's wisdom and favor attracted people and attracted the kings of the earth. Now he had enough resources and one day he built God a house. You always see the pattern. That means you can reverse engineer this thing I just said to explain why your hands are empty. That means if your hands are empty, it is because enough men have not opened their hands. And if enough men have not opened their hands, it is because wisdom and favor has not drawn them. And if wisdom and favor is lacking, you go to God. Does any man lack wisdom? He says, let him go to God that give it. You want to prosper? I have shown you a key that converts this prophecy. Father, I thank you because you are the giver of wisdom. Are you saying that it's unwise to ask God directly for money? He can be faithful, but this is the equation. This is how it comes. You don't just say, oh God, please give me money now. Is it that you are not? That's not how it works. Now, a miracle can happen to solve an immediate problem. But let me tell you classically, God answers people's wealth problem by giving them wisdom and favor. Wisdom and favor attracts men. Men come with resources and influence. Once you have that, it is called financial dominion because you can repeat the circle again. For as long as your relationship with God. Now, if you are Satan and you want to make someone poor, what will be the greatest point of your target? It's not men. It's the person's relationship with God. 
whatever I can do to cut you from receiving wisdom and favor, I've done you a disservice as far as becoming prosperous is concerned. Now, are you seeing that true prosperity should not make you leave God? Does this make sense to you now? True prosperity does not make believers leave God. It's a lie. It's a system of the world that tries to bypass this formula. You should be more spiritual the wealthier you are becoming because God should be the source of that wisdom. That means your fellowship with God becomes a continuity for more wisdom, greater wisdom. So in what way does somebody become prosperous and then now forgets God? That means that person is going to go down soon. All wealth starts from the realm of the spirit. If you don't receive it from God Almighty, you will receive it from a familiar spirit. Both of them have covenants you must answer to. Are we together? If you go to Satan and say, make me wealthy, you say, that is fine. But here are my terms. You will serve me. You will worship me. You will draw people to me. You will destroy lives. You will destroy homes. You will live a foolish life. You will not be able to spend your money. You will die miserably. Is this a covenant? You say, fine. Once you sign it, what Satan will give you is also wisdom and favor. He won't give you money. It's still the same formula. He will place something on your life that makes you unusually wise to your detriment. With that wisdom, you will come up with services and products that will still attract the same men. When those men come, they will still bring the resources. But the only thing is that when you have the resources and the influence, Satan will remind you, remember what we agreed on. And if you say, don't disturb me, you will, you will be surprised. All he needs to do is withdraw what brought them. And what you have, no matter how much, will deplete mysteriously. True prosperity is not money. True prosperity is your relationship with God. And the wisdom that is endlessly flowing from him to you and the favor that endlessly comes that capacity to gravitate strategic relationships to your life and with the coming of those relationships will be resources and influence and with the resources and influence you are now mandated to remember the reason why he blessed you to be a blessing to the world live a responsible life with dignity advance the program of god so when god says it's a season of abundance what in your understanding do you think he's saying he's saying it's a season to get closer to me like never before did you get that now because wisdom truly comes from god it can be imparted through careers but ultimately wisdom comes from god hmm. wealth is relational all way relationship with God then relationship with men then relationship with things and that includes resources apostle so what becomes the answer for my empty-handedness now the absence of men enough men to bless you or a certain kind of men who don't have the means to bless you and I've taught you here and I will still pray that prayer for you tonight that when God wants to help you he relocates your audience did I teach you that he brings to you strategic men find a way of believing this strategic people strategic people for the lack of this simple understanding there are believers praying foolishly. There are believers going around in circles and wondering why they are not prosperous. Regardless what happens, they respect things more than men. For most believers, all that is in their mind is the arrival of Naira and Kobo and pounds and dollars. It doesn't work that way. How do you know you need wisdom? Because nobody is around your life to drink of that wisdom that means you don't have it I tell you the truth wisdom and favor is so scarce when you carry that grace you will never be alone men will look for you you don't have to be a preacher you can be a banker you can be a graduate the moment you carry genuine wisdom wisdom that can solve problems 
wisdom oh that there is oil and treasure to be desired in the dwelling of the wise there is treasure to be desired in the dwelling of the wise when i launch this as a principle the greatest secret of the help of god upon my life is my relationship with him now i don't seek him just because i want wisdom i love him for who he is but you see it's impossible to strengthen your intimacy with god and not have among the many things that pour into you ever increasing wisdom and as that wisdom keeps coming his favor keeps resting upon you you know what happens men will keep coming and those men will not come empty even if you are a baby they will not ask you how old you are they will not ask you whether you are male or female they will not ask you whether you are Igbo, you are yoruba you are hausa you are american you are they will not ask you that no genuine wisdom defies all those sentiments and when it comes with it will come resources limitless resources resources as many as the men that come please hear me the multitude of men is also the multitude of wealth do you believe what you just heard tonight when God tells us that we're stepping into a season of abundance let me help you make sense of what this prophecy is and then we'll pray number one it means like never before you should get closer to God because he is the fountain of wisdom he is the only one who can give men wisdom and he's the only one who is the true source of favor when wisdom and favor rests upon you men will come they will come in their numbers they will come from different nations you don't need to travel around the world to meet the men who are holding the resources that are yours you just need to be valuable i wish i had the time i would have shown you what happened between the widow in zarephath and elijah when every the brook chariot had dried god told him to go to zarephath he says i have commanded a widow to feed you i have commanded a widow to feed you i have commanded a widow to feed you when he got there the woman did not sound like she was commanded and the man said you know what since i am here now i have come with value your relationship with me is why i will not die but my relationship with you is why you will live too your oil will not be spent your flour will not be spent all through the period of famine and in return she kept cooking the oil the, the food that would not be spent and both of them benefited wisdom wisdom brings men wisdom brings men favor brings men with the coming of men you will always find resources therefore if your hands are empty what you should pray for is not money what you should pray for is the wisdom and the favor to the degree that can draw strategic men the bible puts it this way gentiles shall come to your light koinonia hear me he says kings these are the people you are looking for kings kings don't come to your light kings come to the brightness of your rising the brightness the excellency of that wisdom oh rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me spirit of wisdom that the same way a man receives wisdom a business can also receive wisdom a ministry can also receive wisdom receive favor and the same thing that happens to individuals will happen to the business 
will happen to the ministry the same way a man can receive wisdom receive favor men will come to that man as a single entity bringing gold frankincense and myrrh a ministry can receive wisdom by the same principle of intimacy by the same principle access favor and the same way men come to the person is the same way men will come to the vision and bring to that vision resources so you don't just pray and say lord bring money to run this church that's not how it works it starts with intimacy intimacy brings wisdom and favor favor attracts men then graduates the men to quality men then graduates them to kings nobles gatekeepers captains of industry and when they come they give to match their level of growth they give to match their level of growth a billionaire will never give to somebody he loves and honors as a pauper no he will not do that are we together if a billionaire considers you valuable enough to him not that he's just doing charity he considers you an asset he will give to match his mindset this is what brings acceleration so in one day you can have an allowance of decades because somebody with such mindset and such resources granted access to you now you may say some of the people who give sometimes they are not believers some of the people who come they are not believers god allows that because the earth is still him it still belongs to him even if they went to the devil to get that money provided you know it's evil money and you reject it god will honor you but you don't have the liberty to know how everybody made their money that is the reason why when the money comes to you you purify it with thanksgiving this is what the bible says which is the reason why it is dangerous to steal money in church hey it's dangerous to do what because you don't know what you are stealing someone may pray all the courses in his life and say lord on this seed let this thing rest and that's the one you carried <laughs> oh rest on me oh rest on me to ask you a question are there men in Abuja are there men in Lagos are there men in Nigeria are there men in UK in America everywhere including your village are there strategic men in Abuja are there strategic men in Nigeria if God is the God of portions your portion has been distributed listen listen to me I want you to believe this God is a God of portions he said the increase of the field is for all and that even the king is fed you can explain your wealth even if the world's economy they may not understand it wealth is not him is not magic it comes from man If I become a billion naira richer, a billion dollars richer, it came from man. The question is, if you get it by pointing a gun, you are a thief. It is still man you got it from. Every Ambrober got his money from man. The only thing is that he did, that relationship was not profitable because he pointed a gun at their head to collect it. Whether you are a thief, whether you are an entrepreneur, whether you are, God forbid, an occultist, is still men that the resources will come from. It is how it is gotten that glorifies God or otherwise. Men, in all you're getting, if you ignore men, don't pursue contracts and ignore men. You are making a mistake because the person approving the contract is a man. 
what you need to pray for is say Lord give me wisdom give me favor favor enough to make anyone including Cyrus to want me how many of you know that wealthy people also have a need and everybody's need is his point of contact the rate at which we chase people for money God never have told you wealth is not something you pursue you attract it by who you are becoming the excellency of the wisdom of God at work in your life if I prosper today it's not because I'm a preacher no if I prosper today is because I have received by mercy wisdom and favor that is applicable to enough men and those men can gravitate towards me and in honor to that wisdom whether sold or dispensed freely they will honor it and and if those men are sufficient enough I will not beg for bread are we together listen to what I'm telling you God and men are the two secrets I've given you today God and men not just products and services respect whoever taught you what they taught you but ask the person whether he's rich first god and men are the greatest secrets i know to wealth god and men give value to products and services give value to businesses and estates whatever it is god and men are the secrets if I was solving all my discussion as a mathematical problem, at the end of all of that, I will remove all the variables. And the only two that will be left is God and man. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he given to the children of men. Every other variable is almost inconsequential. If God says no and men say no, carry your products places, you will still be poor. But if God says yes, he will put something in you that will force men to say yes. The greatest secret I know, the greatest secret to wealth are strategic relationships. But it does not come by chasing people. We used to call it those days friend for food. People who just look for a rich person and inconvenience them. It doesn't work that way. You attract strategic people by displaying the excellency of the wisdom of God. Are we together? And that includes those, you know, we, we say it a lot in church that the wealth of the wicked is laid for the righteous. It will not happen just by you folding your arms. God will give you wisdom. Wisdom that dumbfounds principalities and powers. Wisdom that is needed even in the Babylonian camp. They will search for men with that kind of wisdom and not find it. And they will come to you to entreat your favor. And when they come to you, like Naaman, they will not come empty. If Elisha was hungry, he would have collected the gift from Naaman. Elisha said, no, 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 you go. Look at what Elisha told the woman in Shunem. He said, what should I do? Should I talk to the king for you? I can talk to the king. King, attend to a woman here. And if you say, prophet, I ignore you, you will see what the wisdom of God can do. She will also hear by this time tomorrow. And that king will leave that place quietly. Are we together? This explains the wealth of many in the kingdom. I'm saying it again. If your wealth is by crook, by bribery and corruption, it will not fit this equation. But if it is with the dignity of kingdom integrity, don't tell me it did not start with God. Wealth does not start with ideas. Kingdom wealth does not start with ideas. Business people, I respect all that you have learned, but I submit to you with the, by the authority of scripture. Wealth does not even start with business. It does not start with investments. Wealth starts with your relationship with God. From that relationship comes the wisdom and the favor. It can translate to quality investments. The investment will come as an advice from a man. The invest, whatever you are doing, it is still men. You just carry this equation and go and work wonders with it. God and men.
God and men. They will give value to ideas. God and men will give value to estates. God and men. Someone God can give you a wisdom now to build an estate. And before you finish, a strategic man will come and say, my company wants to put in 50 people and you just build the estates. You already have occupants. That one is not an idea. It's favor that has come from men. Men. Let me remind you again before we begin to pray. You are as wealthy as the men who open their hands towards you. Either they open their hands to transact with you. When you call someone a contractor, who is a contractor? A contractor is not just one who builds roads or supplies. A contractor is one who needs favor with men first. Your tractor will remain there until men give you access. Am I right on that? So Satan has suggested various ways of attracting men. Bribery, corruption, going to the harbor list, all of these are unnecessary. God's superior ways to stay with him and he will grant you wisdom. The wisdom will direct you on what to do. The wisdom will direct you on how to relate with those men well. I've taught you relationships. You can be in the place of prayer with God and God can tell you, buy a pack of wine, go and greet this man. That is the wisdom for your next level. It may not be applicable to everybody, but it came in the place of prayer. Just when you are going to greet the man, that's when your destiny helper just came to see the man too. And they'll say, aha, this is the man that I told you. This man can build. And the man will look at you and say, I don't know what is... Can you take a contract of 10 billion? Will you be able to do it? Take 5 billion to mobilize you first. And someone will see you and say, no, this guy must have gone somewhere. The person is right. You went somewhere, truly. Listen, let me challenge all business people and contractors here. Trust me, if you are part of this vision, I'm showing you how to be wealthy. Leave all those contract papers in one minute and take a day or two. Stop chasing around people. People insult you, you still say yes, sir. No, go with God. Place something upon my head, oh God. Place something upon my business. Place something upon my construction company. Bring honor to my becoming. Let me not become as a slave and owe everybody thank you. Someone sees you tomorrow, even in your height, he still wants to kick you like a football and says, I made you, oh. Uh -uh. Abraham said, let it not be that anyone will say, I made Abraham rich. All blessings come from God but through men. Don't allow any man to tell you he's the one who made you. That's absolute nonsense. But that is the consequence of making men become God. Men are in the success equation. But it starts with God. The formula is in the beginning. God. Is someone ready to pray in the spirit? Go ahead and pray in the spirit for one minute. Before I speak, I release these prophetic words over your Ah, don't waste this dream. Don't waste this dream. Wow, dear transformed believer, that was a powerful word. That was a word filled with wisdom. That's a word somebody should listen to over and over again. Thank you so much for joining us in this today's video. Thank you for watching to this point. Please, if you love your neighbor, if you love your friends, if you love your family members, and you want to see them come out of poverty, you want to see people enter into their wealthy place, you want to see people get transgenerational wealth, you want to see people change their levels in this very year, do well to share this video because I believe in the prophetic word God have said that this is the season of abundance, that God is opening up us up to a season of abundance and it's a prophetic word. What you do is that when you get this word, you share it with people so that they will run with it because the company you keep when you become wealthy also, also matters. As God is changing your level, he's changing the level of your family members and everybody around you. Such a powerful word from God servant i was literally you know just thinking and pondering as he was speaking connecting one or two together he's really right thank god for the the, the sermon it really blessed me um uh, welcome to the commentary section my name is Kola Dave Godman and I bring you commentaries on sermons preached by God's servant apostle Joshua Selman and here I'm going to be sharing what I learned from the video in this particular service today I learned that I, I need to go back to my roots the roots I should stop looking for any other metrics 
and face the core foundation the first core foundation is god relationship with god that's the core foundation you know the core foundation is your relationship with god after your relationship with god any other thing can follow you understand any other thing can follow get into that core foundation with god let him put something upon your life and your business that's going to make it stand out that's going to make it stand out in life that's going to make it stand out in your family that's make it, going to make you stand out in your place of work because god has the secret yes it's true he's the one that gives it power to get wealth it's literally it's literally the truth it's what we work with from the scriptures right but we are but we, we get so carried away by the world system that we begin to th- place it of course this he said it he apologized to the financial advisors right that he's not trying to discredit them right but he's speaking the truth kingdom wealth when it comes to kingdom wealth god and man these are the two secrets and this is what i've learned i believe you learned that too you know i believe that god will use this message to bless you to lift you to take you into higher realms in the name of jesus the word you have heard will not be taken away from you the word you have heard will, will, will take roots downwards and bear fruits upwards because of this sermon someone will be launching into a season of wealth and abundance in the mighty name of jesus god is going to be turning things around for your favor god is going to be changing your financial situation you'll be a light in your generation and your family god will give you the wisdom to enter into your wealthy place as you have listened to this sermon be blessed in jesus name amen thank you so much for joining me today um do well to like this video share it to someone please so that it can bless their life you can see the part one of it posted um earlier so go do well to check out uh the part one of the video that's why some people are struggling financially the reasons that you have not broken through financially check out that part too and then you know comment what blessed you most on this video let us know where you're watching from and we'll see you when we post our next video bye and god bless you amen